dealing with. Now we're running after money, and it's so interesting because now we're trying to recover money, and people are shouting at the government, Why are you not recovering? Why didn't you talk when they were stealing? If you, prevention is better than cure, now we're looking for money everywhere. But people were stealing the money, they carted it away. When we started, um, it's interesting the question that was asked about uh, money being found. When we started the whistleblower policy, there was so much debate. People said, no, why should you pay somebody 5%? Um, our argument was, what about the person who stole 100%? Why aren't you worried about the person who took 100%? Why are you fixated with the person who's getting 5% for helping you to bring it back? 5% is it's just the cost of getting it back. But that's the money that should have been used for our roads. That's the money that should have been used for our rail. Yes, Governor B mentioned the fact that money was borrowed. We didn't do that loan, but we inherited it, and government is a continuum for the airports that are being, that are being fixed now. The runway that was closed in Abuja, we paid Julius Berger up front. We called them, we said, this is your money. Make sure the airport is open on the day it's meant to open. Did it not open? If you spend money on the right things, you get the right results. I thought it was interesting, just an interesting analogy. We find how much in, in somebody's flat, convert it into Naira, it's about 24 billion? 24 billion? It was only 8 billion was needed for that runway. We wouldn't have had to have closed the airport. So we need to be very, very honest with ourselves so that we don't all think it was everybody else, not us. We all sat here, we all watched that excess. There's some countries that just sold their oil forward, like the Mexicans. They sold their oil forward, they said, give us $68 a barrel, we don't care whether it goes to 150, 100, we just want stability. There's some countries where they only set, um, spend a fixed percentage of their oil revenues. But we lived on oil, and it made us feel good. And unfortunately, we didn't spend those, those boom years, we didn't spend the money on the right things. And that's why we are now in a position, as Governor Obi has acknowledged, that we do have to borrow. Why? Because if we have to wait for the oil price to recover, we'll be in recession for a very long time. So the only option we have is borrow, but use the money for capital projects that will grow the economy. Now, how do capital projects grow the economy? And I use this analogy a lot. Take two entrepreneurs. If you take a Nigerian and another entrepreneur, let's assume they both bake cookies. The one in Nigeria has certain things that make him or her uncompetitive. Number one, power. Number two, okay, after baking the cookies, how do you move them? Let's even say the person is in Onisha. Before they bring their cookies from Onisha to Lagos, the cost of transport has made them unprofitable. And it's cheaper to then import from China the same cookies. So that's what's been happening. But we're trying to change that. And that's why you see the massive expenditure on capital projects. Trying to do more with much less money. Because when we do that, businesses can thrive. When we put the rail system in place and you can move from maybe Ibadan to Lagos in 40 minutes instead of six hours, businesses can thrive. And that's where jobs are created and that's how economies grow. And those jobs are not in oil, those jobs are outside oil. Those are resilient jobs that will bring long-term growth to our economy. So that's the story. That's really the story of what happened. We had a lot of money and we didn't use it well. We squandered it. What wasn't stolen was wasted. And now we're living with the consequence. At that same time, we were borrowing. The same time that oil prices were as high as 120, Nigeria was borrowing. Borrowing to pay salaries. Now we're borrowing to do railway and people are saying don't borrow. I don't get it. We have to be serious. We have no choice. When they were borrowing to pay salaries is when we should have come out and said, why are you borrowing? Oil is 120. What are you borrowing for? And yet you're not doing capital projects. So what are you borrowing for? Those are the questions, those are the debates we should have had. But we didn't have them. But the past is gone, but we need to move forward. So how is this government trying to do things differently? Capital expenditure now is our focus. Everything we're doing is to create headroom for capital expenditure. 
that will bring in quality infrastructure that will get this economy moving. There's pretty much no part of this federation that doesn't have the potential to be productive. Now we're talking about ebony rice. Who knew ebony rice then? Now we're, buying, we're eating local rice. We're talking about kebi rice instead of buying Thailand rice. That's creating jobs for Nigerians. And we must continue along those lines. We must get our refineries working so that we don't import uh, petroleum. And we cannot be importing food. We simply can't afford to be importing food. 180 million people. With the kind of unemployment we have, we have no business importing food. And we have huge, huge amounts of fertile land. We can't import food. So let me move on to the next slide, please. Next slide. OK, so what are we doing? How are we trying to do things differently? One of the things that we're trying to do is to improve our revenue so that we're not so dependent on oil. Oil is only 10% of our economy, but it was representing about 60% of government revenues. That's a mismatch. What about the rest of the economy? Why is it contributing so little to government revenue? Our tax to GDP ratio in Nigeria is 6%. We have one of the lowest in the world. Ghana is at 15.9% tax to GDP. South Africa's at 24. Most advanced countries are around 30 to 32% tax to GDP. We're at 6. I ran um, some analysis. I asked the Federal Indian Revenue Service to give me details of the number of Nigerians paying taxes of 20 million naira or above. Anybody want to guess the number? 214 for the whole country out of 180 million people. And yet we have billionaires, millionaires, trillionaires. How can only 214 people be paying tax of 20 million naira or more? Something's wrong. So we're going to fix that. We have to broaden the tax base. Already the F Federal Indian Revenue Service have registered more than 825,000 companies, companies that have either paid no tax at all or who were just registered and, and, and just didn't pay. And they're active and some of them were doing business with government. So we set a rule. If you come to government for a payment, the first thing we do is check your tax status. That's when we discovered that even some people who came, subsidy, government is owing me, is owing me, want to pay you now. You've never paid any tax. How can that be? So we're blocking all those loopholes. If you come to government now, we want to see your tax status. There's a legal requirement that on every headed paper, you're supposed to list the names of directors. We've not been complying. We've just sent out a circular. If you're processing a payment, if we can't see the names of the directors of the company, don't pay. Because we must know that everybody pays their fair share. It's the way a tax system, a good tax system must work. And for us to drive this country forward, Nigerians have to pay the right taxes. Not tax of going to bring a tax clearance certificate of 50,000 naira and you're traveling business class. That, those days are over. People have to pay the right taxes. If we want services, if we want power, if we want rail, if we want road, we have to pay for it. So we also are blocking leakages um, in the tax system and improving compliance. Then we're improving customs revenue. When we came into office, all the scanners, all the container scanners had broken down. Why? They gave the contract to some politicians to do. They didn't maintain the scanners. Oh, none are working. Now, that has an impact on two things. It has an impact on customs revenue because for them to see what's inside the container, they have to open it and begin to pull it out and look at the things. It's not done like that anywhere in the world. It adds to the delay in your getting... Um, your goods are, and it gives customs officers discretion. 